All right, we are at the top of the hour and yeah. one minute past. So let's go ahead and get started. All um, right. And MJ, I think uh, uh, you're, why don't you go ahead and do the welcome and then I can take things from there. Okay, great. So we've let everybody in, we're ready to go? Yes. All right, good. Sorry to be late, everybody. I was having a little bit of a connection issue. Hi, I'm MJ Bishop. I direct the Kerwin Center for Academic Innovation at the University System of Maryland. Um, and as part of that work, the Kerwin Center is leading the Maryland Open Source Textbook Initiative in collaboration with other terrific partners like Maryland Online, the Maryland Association of Community Colleges, and most recently, MICUA, the Maryland Independent Colleges and Universities. So um, really pleased to um, have you all join us today to talk a little bit about um, another new service that we're going to be able to offer through uh, the MOST initiative. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with MOST, um, we've been uh, around since about 2013 supporting faculty OER adoptions and doing what we can to leverage uh, the power of us working collaboratively on these kinds of projects um, in order to achieve more, even more than just student uh, cost savings. Um, we're increasingly interested also in conversations around student learning and the ways in which our adoptions of OER are enhancing our pedagogies. Um, so I'm really, really excited about uh, have inviting Joy um, and the Lumen folks to talk about a new tool that they have available called uh, Lumen Circles um, to support virtual communities of practice. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Julie to talk about it in just a sec, but I want to say that um, um, these, this is coming to you free of charge for the time being um, as a result of our generous grant from the Hewlett Foundation to support this work across the state. So um, I, I, I like uh, tackling that right up, uh, up front so that everybody understands um, this is an opportunity available to you um, and other than your time um, is not going to cost your institutions any additional, uh, any additional money. So I'll turn it over to you, Julie, and I'll stick around and be available to answer any, any questions that come up. Thanks so much, MJ. Um, the other thing that I want to just check on, um, I believe everybody can see and hear us uh, because I, you know, did all the right things that you're supposed to do. Could I ask um, the folks who are watching to just uh, a couple people, if, if you, um, I just posted a chat to make sure you can hear me and see my screen. Um, if somebody could uh, answer in the chat, that would be awesome. And then we'll use the chat function for questions as we go as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Teresa. Fabulous. <laughs> There you go. Yep. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Um, so uh, as we go again, uh, feel free to use the chat. Um, and uh, well, I, I have, I'm finishing this up with a set of FAQs. Um, and so as we go through that, I will try and get through the information. I'll try and keep an eye on chat as well. Um, but uh, I think it, it may work most smoothly if we get through the presentation part and then we can open it up for questions. Although if I see something that's timely as I'm going through stuff, I'll certainly uh, pause and address it. And Julie, so I'm, I'm happy to keep oh, an eye on chat too. To wonderful, see. thank you. Thank you, Tassie. I, I do appreciate that. Um, so I'm Julie Curtis. I'm with Lumen Learning and uh, we've been really excited about the opportunity to introduce a full-fledged professional development uh, offering uh, into the higher education space. It builds on something that some of you may have heard of before, Faculty Guild. And so I'll talk a little bit about that and we'll preview what it looks like and then let you know what's ahead for the experience that you'll have with this over the next academic year. Um, so I will, I'll do present to make my slides a little bit bigger. The other thing that I wanna say just as we're getting started is we are so appreciative of MOST and the partnership that we have with the Kerwin Center to be able to bring this type of experience to you and to be able to work with uh, the faculty and support the faculty and students in Maryland in a variety of different ways. And, and so being able to add this professional development offering as part of the ways that we get to work with you and support your students is, is really awesome. So thank you for that. All right, as I mentioned, Lumen Circles uh, builds on something that some folks may have heard of before called Faculty Guild. Um, that was a professional development program that uh, was an, an organization that uh, ran it for 
uh, a few years. I think they started in 2017. Um, and uh, for a variety of reasons, Lumen had the opportunity in the spring to consider acquiring Faculty Guild and formally adding a set of professional development services to the things that we do. And after evaluating the opportunities and looking at the, the set of tools and the methodology, the experience that Faculty Guild had developed, we decided that there actually was a lot of alignment between the things that we could do with that tool set and this broader impact that we're trying to make in terms of supporting uh, teaching and learning innovation, supporting evidence-based teaching practices. Um, and it also allows us to support uh, more faculty members than just those who are using Lumen course materials. And so it's exciting to us to be able to broaden the reach and be able to support more kinds of faculty members teaching more kinds of subjects um, than uh, simply what we can do with that core OER offering that we continue to uh, develop and build. And so um, in June, uh, it was formalized. We acquired Assets of Faculty Guild and this great new tool set. And, and just to highlight what this means now is that we have, you know, we continue to have Lumen courseware and a lot of folks use that. Um, we also have Lumen Circles, which is this faculty professional development experience that we'll be talking about. And then there's some people that happen to use both. And so if you are using one and not the other, that's okay. If you use both, there's some awesome things that we're able to do with that combined offering. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions to say, well, I don't use Lumen courseware, so does this apply to me? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. It's a whole professional development experience that's completely independent of what discipline you use or what course materials you use. Um, and, uh, and, and helps you kind of uh, explore and expand wherever you are as a teacher in terms of um, evidence-based teaching practices and, and expanding your knowledge in areas that you want to grow. So um, the notion of communities of practice, um, I, uh, I'm not sure how many of you have had the experience of, of growing professionally or having this type of learning experience in a community of practice. Um, but each time I have the opportunity to talk to groups of faculty members about this experience, those who've had a community of practice type experience um, typically have really great things to say about it and, and saying it's, it's, it's so much more powerful than simply sitting in a workshop and learning about, you know, having somebody tell you the things that you're supposed to do. Instead, a community of practice is a group of people that are committed to growing together professionally in a similar direction. And so with that, um, they have support for each other, they share expertise, they share ideas, they can kind of push each other in different directions. Um, they are able to kind of pick and choose and learn from other people's experiences and it opens doors to be able to help you figure out directions you can grow with a, a group of people that have similar experiences and similar context and similar goals. Um, and uh, everything that we are seeing and hearing about the set of tools that will come together um, is that it will support really vibrant and, uh, and fun communities of practice for you to participate in over the next few months. So uh, again, learning, sharing, reflecting, uh, growing, and being able to do all of these things together in a supportive environment is the goal of ultimately of what this experience is. So what is the set of tools that will come together? And then I'll show you what those actually look like in practice. Um, so uh, there's, uh, so overall what we're trying to do is empower teachers and provide this set of tools to help uh, help educators grow from wherever you are in the directions that you want to grow. Um, and, and really to build on your own strengths and expand from there. Um, so there's an element of this experience that is skill building that's topical in the case for folks on this call. It, it, it hones in on OER and open pedagogy. Um, there is an element of you're applying what you're learning and you're teaching and being able to see how that goes. Um, you're reflecting and exploring. So you're thinking about, you're being thoughtful about the choices that you're making. You're uh, giving some thought as to, you know, I haven't tried this before, but that looks like an interesting direction. Maybe I will give that a try. Um, so it, it, it really gives you this opportunity to explore and kind of compare notes with peers uh, and decide what are the things that you want to do to uh, support your students and the directions that you're interested in growing. 
Um, as I mentioned, there's an element of building on strengths. One of the first things that you do as you come into the platform is identify what are the kinds of pedagogical practices that you're already using and that you're already familiar with. And then from that kind of foundation or benchmark point, um, it helps you uh, kind of track and see what are the directions that I'm continuing to grow. Um, from that benchmark. And, and with that, uh, you're able to just become more thoughtful about these are the kinds of things that I do a lot. These are other areas or, you know, pedagogical choices I could be making that, that, that I haven't started exploring yet in a meaningful way. And then you have the choices, the, the opportunity to explore that. Um, the virtual peer community is all around you throughout this experience. And so you're, you're learning, you're sharing, you're providing feedback. Um, and then there's mentoring and support. So that comes from within the community, that comes from facilitators who are, we've, we've got a wonderful set of veteran facilitators that are gonna be working with us um, through, uh, throughout this program. And, um, and then also we have opportunities to help connect people within a broader uh, Lumen community within a broader team and and so we encourage you to kind of bring your questions or bring out the areas that you're trying to grow so that this experience can help you connect with and find the resources and the people that can help you continue to move in those directions. So what are you going to get from the circle? Uh, so it's um, it's a safe and supportive place. So it's a place where people are, you know, can be comfortable learning and sharing together. Uh, you'll be able to ask questions. You can share your experiences. You can uh, try new things and see how they work and recognizing that there is an, an iterative element of this. You try stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but in either case, you can learn from those things. Um, and the goal of this is the learning, is the helping you, you know, kind of grow over time. Um, and then as you do that, there's guidance, there's feedback that comes from the facilitator and from the community itself. So uh, what's the structure of it? So there's a skill building element that's kind of the beginning part. Um, as you are starting to teach and apply new skills, then you're applying those practices as you go. There's a set of weekly assignments that uh, you can get into a cadence of um, it, there's, you know, the assignment might be explore these things or it might be think about this direction. And as you're teaching, we'd like you to reflect on some practice that is heading in this general direction. Um, and, uh, and then as you're sharing uh, that reflection with the community, you, you will have opportunities to, uh, to give and receive feedback from uh, peers within the community. Um, typically, there's, there's one assignment per week uh, and, and, um, and that, that is some type of reflection activity. And then uh, everybody is assigned to provide feedback to two people. And each week you'll, you'll be assigned uh, a different couple of people within your community. Um, and so it, it becomes that cadence. And then periodically there are opportunities to pause and say, okay, bigger picture, how am I doing? What am I thinking? What are, uh, what are further directions that I can explore? Um, one of the things that is unique about uh, this platform and the experience that you'll have, it, it provides a common foundation of evidence-based teaching practices that you're able to explore in the context of OER and open pedagogy. I think we have a couple of people also who are doing a program that's specifically focused on using um, open or using Lumen Waymaker courseware and and so they're focusing on using basically OER courseware and effective practices around that. And so in each of these different uh, these tracks of the program and I'll give a little bit more detail about those two different programs and how they work. Um, but one of the things they have in common is this foundation of effective teaching practices. And so this is a foundation that applies across the board. So regardless of which discipline you're teaching or what modality you're teaching, these are all practices that uh, when you're applying them and looking for ways to do these things, you're doing things that will support your student's success. And there are ways to apply these practices using an OER lens or using an open pedagogy lens or using a courseware lens to say, how do I want to do this and use the advantages or the affordances of OER or use the affordances of open pedagogy or use the affordances of these courseware to help me do these things better. 
And so uh, one of the things that you'll do early in your program is you'll have an opportunity to dig into these different practices. A common experience that we hear from a lot of faculty members is that they, they're familiar with some of these practices. Or they're things that they do, but they didn't necessarily know that they had a name. Um, and, and then also there's an element that as you explore the, the practices themselves, it helps you recognize or, or helps you um, gain a deeper understanding of what's the pedagogical significance of each of these things. Um, and so a good example is assessment. You know, assessment is something that uh, you're, you're using to assess you know, the progress of where a student is. Um, but another important pedagogical element of assessment is you're providing feedback not only to you as the teacher to track progress, but also you're providing the feedback to that student about how are they doing so that they can also adjust course. Um, and so a part of uh, applying these different practices and building your familiarity with them is just to help you understand oh, when I'm doing this kind of thing, here's a deeper pedagogical significance, and here's a way that I can use OER, or here's a way that I can use my courseware, or here's a way that I can use open pedagogy to go deeper and provide these advantages to my students because these are more effective practices for their learning. Another thing that I'll note is the object of this is not to play bingo and do, you know, every one of these things and, and, and get them across the board. This is highly exploratory. And so the, uh, as, as you enter the platform, you'll be able to go in and, and assess, here's how familiar or how, how often I use these different types of things as a, as a benchmark or a baseline to give you your own picture of your typical pedagogical choices. And then over time, you'll, have, you'll be able to reflect on that and you'll be able to kind of make conscious choices about other directions that you want to grow. Um, but where the direction that you grow is really up to you. And so you have a lot of freedom within that to explore and, and, and build in areas that are kind of feel where you are drawn to expand your teaching practice and also to address challenges or opportunities that you might see with your students. So as I mentioned, there's um, a couple of different tracks that people will be participating in through the MOST program this year. Um, and on this call, most people uh, are, uh, can I move this out of the way? I can't, I guess you can still see the wording. Um, so for those who are not using Lumen courseware, specifically Lumen Waymaker or Ohm courseware, um, you'll be participating in the Lumen Circles Fellowship track. And this is a track that is a nine week track. You'll be doing nine weeks in fall and nine weeks in spring. Um, it sp uh, starts at the beginning of the term. And so the, the, the week of start is the week of August 10th. Um, and you'll be focusing uh, on uh, a program with OER and open pedagogy. So all of the people in your circle will, uh, will be focused on that area. That's the direction that everyone has identified that they want to grow. And so you'll learn, you know, what's different about teaching with OER. You'll have uh, opportunities to try different pedagogical strategies, aligning with these evidence-based practices that I was just showing you. Um, how do you engage students? Uh, you know, peer sharing and feedback and ideas around that. Um, so being able to explore, explore that direction over the, the course of that nine weeks. For folks who are using Lumen Waymaker or Ohm, the fall term will be what we call success accelerator and so it's a special program that helps you hone in very early on that set of effective teaching practices and the ways that the courseware tools the oer courseware tools help you apply those practices and so you can kind of dig in and explore different directions uh, that you want to grow and um, and then uh, so with that uh, you'll you'll uh, be part of that type of a learning community with other folks that are using Lumen courseware and have the opportunity to learn and share together um, in that way over that five week period, recognizing that many of the people that are getting started with the courseware have that, that courseware learning curve. And so um, throughout the rest of the term after that structured five week period, you'll continue to have access to the circle and to your facilitator. Um, and, and it just becomes a less structured uh, kind of support community. 
um, for that fall term. Um, then as you go into spring term, you'll have the opportunity to go into the full Lumen Circle Fellowship on OER and open pedagogy. So you'll be having the same experiences, the rest of the group, um, you know, moving beyond that courseware intensive piece. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to do that uh, in the um, starting in January, I believe. Um, and then for everybody, uh, again, through the most um, uh, agreement that we have in place, um, you'll have the opportunity to become part of what we call the crescendo circle. So once your structured experience is completed over the course of the academic year, um, you'll have the opportunity to stay engaged and use the platform. And if you find this really kind of speaks to you and how you like to grow professionally, you'll have that opportunity to continue in more of a self-paced um, structure. We'll have professional development experiences, presentations and things like that that are optional that you can participate in. Um, and, and then opportunities to continue to build your profile and uh, explore teaching practices and connect with the community over time. All right, so at this point, I'm going to switch over and show you what I'll, where all of this happens. So uh, we have a, uh, I mentioned a platform, it's a virtual, it's basically a website um, that supports this virtual learning community experience. And so the login page looks like this. I thought I would start with the login page. So as you get an email over the next week that's welcoming you to the platform and inviting you to log in, you'll see this is what it looks like. You know, I just realized I forgot to hit record and make sure that this Actually, is recording. you are recording. Oh, it is recording? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay, that means whoever set this up, set it to record Let's automatically. It, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me sign in. Um, this happens to be a, a, a demonstration site. And so the people that you see here and the data are not real. Um, so we're not, you know, violating anyone's terms of privacy here. Uh, let's see. Hoping that I get that right. Yes. Okay. So when you come into the learning circle, the first time you log in, you actually won't go straight into your circle. The first time you log in, you will be invited to, actually, you're, you're not invited. You're not given a choice. It takes you right into a pedagogical profile or a, a pedagogy inventory uh, survey. Uh, so it's a survey format. It takes typically five minutes or so, it doesn't take too long. It walks through that set of practices that I showed you and just says, how, how often do you typically use these kinds of things? And it, it explains what they are. So it, it's a nice way to start getting some familiarity with that framework and also just get thoughtful about these are the kinds of things I do a lot. These are the kinds of things that are completely new to me. Um, so you go through that experience and then immediately after that, there is a, uh, it's called an orientation tour. And you can, uh, it, it, it basically just walks you through the process of setting up your profile step by step. Um, so I definitely recommend both of those. Uh, and in, uh, you know, all together you can, um, you know, it takes maybe 15 minutes or so to kind of get all the way through the inventory and set up the key points of your profile. You can go back in later and revisit your profile and fill in more pieces. Um, and so uh, feel free to do that. Once you've done that, then it brings you into your circle. Um, so this is a circle that's built around uh, uh, STEM people. I'll we'll talk about how do we put the circles together, but uh, we're trying as much as possible to align people who are in similar kinds of disciplines. Um, one of the things that I will suggest is to click on the all activities when you get into your circle. So the all activities basically helps you go week by week. Here's where we are. Here's, here's what we're doing this week. And then, um, and so if you, if you want to be able to kind of go back and reference what was, uh, you know, something from a previous week or just see kind of where are we, the all activities is a good place to orient yourself there. Um, otherwise, it just brings you automatically right into whatever week it is. And so if it's week two, you, it will bring you onto the week two page. So you can come right in and see exactly what's going on in that week. Um, and uh, with week two, you'll be able to see here's what we're doing this week. Here's what we're focusing on. And the action items highlights for you, these are the things that you need to do. And so there's, uh, in this case, there's a, a reflection activity. 
it's color coded green indicating that this person has already submitted that. And then the things that are yellow are things that you're uh, waiting on somebody else to do. So these are feedback assignments. Collaborate means provide feedback to these members of your circle. Um, and so the, the yellow means we're waiting on Peter to submit his reflection. And once he does that, then uh, you'll be queued to provide your feedback. Um, and the red lets you know it's ready. That one's ready for you to go ahead and do. And so you can click on that item. It'll show you, uh, you know, the person's reflection that you're providing feedback on and, and uh, just kind of walks you through that process. Um, so here in your circle, a few things. One, just to orient, here's the members of your circle. The purple marker indicates who is the facilitator. Um, so you have that, and if you click on any of these people, you can go in and see their profile, where they're from, that type of thing. Um, as I mentioned, this is, tells you, you know, what are we doing this week? What do I need to accomplish? The feed here uh, has all of the discussion and activities that are happening relative to that week's uh, actions. And so this is where you can see other people uh, uh, posting their reflections or replying to those reflections and, and you'll be queued in as you uh, are posting your stuff, you know, when people have responded and so forth. Um, a couple of other things, there's, uh, there's a discussion forum area where you can uh, there are uh, often there are group discussions. Your facilitator might set up a discussion on a topic for people that want to jump in. Um, and so uh, you can find all that kind of thing there. Um, on the reflection piece, I'm going to click into one of these reflections and, and just highlight um, another thing that's handy about the, the uh, platform. So um, for whatever uh, assignment you have, you'll click on, on the assignment, the reflection, and then it walks you step by step through the pieces that you need to, to do. Um, sometimes the reflection is really just one question, and so you're just doing one response. Um, in the, the uh, fellowships, one of the things that you're doing is teaching reflections that have a structure that walks you through the process of thinking about what was I trying to accomplish, what did I do uh, to help my students uh, with that, how did it work out. Um, and so, so that's what this teaching reflection is. So as you're, as you're putting together the reflection, you know, the first thing it says, what it, was it you, you were trying to have your students learn? And so you identify, what, here's the learning objectives that I was working towards. Then you just briefly describe the activities. Here's what I did to try and, and help my students uh, achieve those learning objectives. Then uh, how did you assess it? What did you do to measure if, if students were getting it or not? Um, the tags, this is where you're able to say, oh, here, um, going back to that framework, that underlying set of effective practices that we were talking about, this is where you're able to say, oh, I, I actually, I used assessment, I used caring, I used, you know, community building or whatever the set of things might be that are there. And, and when you do this, when you add these tags in place or those effective practices, that's, um, that gives us the opportunity and gives you the opportunity to see how your pedagogy is evolving and to be able to see, here's the new kinds of things that I'm exploring and doing as a result of this experience. Um, then you're able to also analyze, here's, here's what I learned from it, here's what seemed to work, here's what didn't work, here's what I might think, uh, try differently next time. So just a very brief analysis of how it happened. Um, so that's the, that's the essence of the reflection, and once you post that reflection, then people jump in and provide comments. And so you'll have comments from uh, your assigned circle members, there might be other circle members who jump in and respond. Your facilitator will, will respond to each reflection for each member of the, of the circle. Um, and in the reflection, in the comments, there are opportunities, you know, people might share their own experiences or ask you questions that help you think differently and go further, you know, down the path of, of exploring what you're doing. Um, so that gives you just a quick view of what the teaching reflection process looks like. Um, and then a couple of other things that I'll just note here in the platform. And again, you'll have opportunities to explore this and the, the orientation part of the platform will guide you through this. But there's a library that has a variety of different resources. Your facilitator might also point you to resources that uh, may be helpful given the things that you're learning and doing. If you click on tags, this is a part of the library that has all of those effective teaching practices. 
if you click on resources in each of these areas, it'll show you here's examples, here's, uh, you know, directions you can go, here's case studies of people doing these things well. Um, so there's a really nice rich set of things that you can, you can access there as well. Um, the last thing that I'll show you in this quick tour is uh, in the profile area. So if you go to your own profile, um, this is uh, something that you can set up. Like I said, there's an orientation wizard to set it up in the beginning. If you skip over pieces, you can go back in and add in uh, more, more pieces as you go. Um, but things you can put in, your teaching philosophy, your, if you want to have a little bio, here's who you are and what makes you tick. Um, goals, there's an idea drawer, there's a way as you're looking through resources that you can, um, you can capture ideas and go back and look at them later. You list your courses, uh, your pedagogy, if you click on that, this is where you're able to see, here's the, the different types of practices that I'm using. There's actually a really cool feature where you can see like a before and after. Where were you at the beginning and where are you now, you know, after you've been through this process in terms of things that you're actually trying out. Um, okay, Grace, when will you have the opportunity to get uh, reading and, and accessing things? Um, you, will, uh, you will have access to that next week. Um, and I, I guess I, I have you as a captive audience so we can give you a tip. So we are in the process now of um, constructing the circles and assigning people uh, to the, the, the virtual community that you'll be part of. And, um, and so when we do that, we want to assign the circle and give you access to the platform at the same time. Um, one of the quirks about the platform is if the, the first time you log in ever, it automatically gives you that pedagogy survey. And then when you're added to a circle, it gives you that pedagogy survey a second time. And, um, and so uh, we don't want people to have to do it twice when you're first coming into the platform. And so we're doing that simultaneously. Um, we also are in the process. So you're going to be in circles, not only with uh, Maryland faculty members, but with faculty members from other institutions uh, around the country. And um, we're also we're in the process of, of finalizing, okay, who, who all is going to be ready to start on August 10th with you? Um, and actually just yesterday, I got that full list. And so we're, we're using that to um, make the assignments and then expect to be getting the username and password and login instructions out to people uh, early next week. Um, uh, let's see, is Lumen nonprofit or distributing faculty intellectual property for profit? So Lumen is a, a company, a, a, a private company, and so we are uh, a, a for-profit entity. Um, I, uh, the, the point around distributing faculty actual intellectual property, so for all of this, we are, we are not distributing it publicly. So this is all stuff that happens within the circle. Um, and there are, there are very, I would encourage everybody to take a look. Let me go back to the circle. Um, there are, in the engagement policy, you can see some, some terms around how, how is it that the information is used, uh, what are the, you know, kind of the privacy and, and respecting, uh, you know, people's, uh, what they're sharing here. So you can see the practices that are, that are uh, part of how all of this happens. Um, so, uh, if you've got questions about that, feel free to reach out. Um, you can uh, send notes to uh, our support at Lumen Learning. You can reach out to me directly as well. All right, uh, so this is the quick tour of the uh, platform. We can always go back and if you've got specific questions about the platform, um, I can uh, we I can come back into that, but I want to get to the other kind of FAQ questions before we um, before we uh, get too much further, just so we can cover all the key points. Uh, let's see. So next thing I want to share. Let me go back into presentation mode. Um, so uh, one of the questions we get is, so what am I doing week by week? How is this whole thing structured? And so to just give you a little bit more picture. So for the nine week program, um, the Lumen Circles Fellowship, week one is really around exploring frameworks. Um, it's meeting your community. There's some of that skill building piece. You'll, uh, you'll be setting goals. You know, this is really giving you that opportunity to 
uh, just kind of get the lay of the land and get oriented to what this experience is going to be. Um, week two is a uh, kind of going deeper into the skill building side of things. Um, in your case, it's OER and open pedagogy. And, and I think OER is really the, the first piece that you'll be digging into what's different about open educational resources. How does that make you think about teaching and learning opportunities differently? Um, and then in weeks three through eight, you're doing, uh, you're doing teaching reflections. And each week there's a prompt that's kind of nudging you in, in certain directions to explore your teaching practice. The open pedagogy piece comes in, um, I think right around week five to go deeper in that direction. Um, and then uh, through the, the last few weeks, you can, you know, you have the opportunity to kind of migrate in, in whatever direction you want to go. Um, the common uh, framework underneath all of it is that, that consistent evidence-based evidence teaching practice framework. Um, and so as you're exploring OER, as you're exploring open pedagogy, part of what we want everybody thinking about is how does this align with those broader set of practices that will help my students be more successful and that will help me more, be more effective as a teacher. And then the final week um, for the nine week program is what we call a meta reflection. So this is really kind of pausing, thinking big picture about the experience and how you have developed over time. Um, after that, the circle itself remains intact in the platform, and so you can still tap in and check in with your community. Um, we actually see from the prior faculty guild experience, a lot of communities actually stay pretty close afterwards. Um, others, it's not quite as active, and, and you know, we'll just kind of have to see what, how the dynamics um, go for the different communities. Um, but you will continue to have access to everything in the platform. One of the things that I didn't show you, um, and if we have time, I can go back and show you that. Um, with the, as in your profile that you're building over time, your reflections can become part of your profile, your other work, you know, it's tracking as you're identifying teaching practices, how, you know, all of that becomes part of your own profile. And there is an ability in that profile to basically download it. And so if you wanted to download a PDF of this work and submit it, um, you know, as part of, uh, you know, part of a, a review in your, uh, in, in, in the processes that you're going through or to be able to share it with your, your department or, uh, or, you know, whatever context might be helpful. Um, you know, for example, if you're going through an accreditation process and you need to demonstrate, here's the active things that we're doing to improve teaching, um, that ability to download and share the profile is really helpful. Okay, uh, the Success Accelerator uh, version of the program. So this is the five-week program that uh, folks will be doing in fall if they're using Lumen Courseware. Um, the week, the first week again is uh, more of a preparatory getting the lay of the land week, exploring, um, uh, kind of exploring uh, the, the, the basic frameworks and just making sure that you're ready to move forward with the experience. Um, and then each week here, you'll, the emphasis is saying, okay, let's look at how do you create um, these different dimensions that are part of that evidence-based practice framework. So the first week hones in on supportive and says, okay, what's going on? Uh, think about how you're creating a supportive educational environment and doing these kinds of practices. And then it gives you opportunity to say, here's a variety of ways the courseware tools help you do these kinds of things more effectively. And, and so you have the opportunity to you know, go in and explore and try some of those out. And again, it's not something where you have to do every single thing. It's, it's providing kind of a buffet of different things you can do and then encouraging you to go in and to be thoughtful about what are the choices you're making and how do you use these additional tools to do these types of practices more effectively. And so the cadence here is to work successively through the different dimensions of of you know, this evidence-based practice framework. Um, as you get to the end of this program, again, the virtual community stays intact. You're there with other faculty members who are using the courseware often, but not always for the first time, um, and able to kind of share experiences and, and share ideas, and you'll be able to continue to engage with that community throughout the term. And certainly, if you have questions specifically about the courseware or how to do things, um, the facilitators are experts in the courseware as well, and so you'll be able to tap into that too. All right, when do learning circles start? This is where we're getting into the FAQ question. 
questions. Um, so the week of July 27th, uh, you'll have the email invitation. So that's when you'll be able to join the platform, set up your profile, uh, visit your circle, uh, check out the different resources. So um, you can kind of go crazy in there, however much or um, I, I, we would encourage everybody to at least log in and go through that basic process, but I know it's a very busy time for everybody. And so, um, you know, we'd like to have you at some point uh, between when you get that email and uh, August 10th, that week when things really begin in earnest, um, definitely log in and just get the lay of the land. Um, the week of August 3rd, you'll be hearing from your facilitator. And so facilitators will be reaching out individually. Um, and uh, let's see, we're, we're asking the facilitators to try and meet everybody um, either individually or in a, a group format. Um, that, that personal meeting is optional. So if you're just completely swamped and don't have time for it, respond to your uh, facilitator and let them know that. If you can just take 15 minutes to get on the phone or to come into a hangout and, and just say hi. Um, we'd love to have folks do that. It's nice to have build that connection and get to know your facilitator a little bit and, and build that community. So you can look out for that. Um, and then the week of August 10th is when the circle starts and that's when you'll start to have the cadence of weekly assignments and activities. Um, so that's kind of what the kickoff process looks like. And then how long does it last? So the OER and Open Pedagogy Fellowship, so this is that nine week fellowship for fall, it's nine weeks and it will end the week of October 12th. Um, and I, I believe that our, our weekly assignments go kind of Wednesday to Wednesday. And so you'll, you'll be able to see here's what's going on and you'll have, you know, by a certain date, you're asked to complete your reflection to give everybody a little bit of time to uh, the people who are assigned to look at your reflection and provide feedback and to kind of keep the, the activity going in a way that supports the community. Um, and, uh, and then after the structured fellowship, again, you can, you can keep connecting with your peer community informally in a, in a non-structured way throughout the term. With Success Accelerator, it's five weeks, so that one begins, again, you know, the same week, the week of August 10th, and ends the week of uh, September 14th. Um, and similar in terms of once the structured part is done, you'll have access to the community and, and the platform to be able to continue to engage informally. Or in an Joanne, unstructured way. Yeah. There's a question in the Q and A about whether assignments will have fixed due dates. So there are fixed due dates for the assignments. That's a great question. Um, but you you do it when you want to do it. So it's not a synchronous assignment in that like you don't have to be online at the same time as other people to do it. It'll say by this date you need to complete the teaching reflection by this date, you need to uh, do the feedback uh, activities. Um, I will say for the nine week uh, portion, uh, the nine week version, we do give people the opportunity to take breaks. And so this is part of, as you come into the platform, you're able to kind of look at the, uh, there's a, you know, terms and conditions. One of the things that it mentions is taking a break and that allows you to say, you know what, this week is just not a good week for me. I need to be off the grid. And so you let your facilitator know, or you just tell the platform this week, I'm taking a break. And then it won't bug you that week to do your teaching reflection or to get your feedback in. Um, and so you have the opportunity to do that twice. Um, outside of that, we do ask people to try and adhere to the due date. Um, if you're a day or so late, you'll get, you know, emails that are saying, hey, you're late, you need to do this. You might get a nudge from your facilitator. Um, and, but the reason for putting the timing in place is again, a lot of the value and a lot of the excitement or the, the fun around this is the getting, being able to get the feedback from your peers and from your facilitator and use that to continue to push you in those, pushing you in the directions that you're growing. And so, being able to do the meeting the due dates helps ensure that everybody has time to give you that feedback in a thoughtful way and that you have time to do the same thing to you know put the thought into into the activities and 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 into the feedback and kind of keep everybody on track and uh we had a second question um by the way i've never used the q a feature before this is pretty cool 
Um, uh, we had a similar kind of question about expectations on time investment each week for the Lumen Circles Fellowship. Version. Yes, let me, that's exactly, that's my next slide. That's so perfect. good question. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the program is designed, both flavors of the program for the fellowship or the uh, success accelerator to take one to two hours per week. Again, this is asynchronous, so it's on your own time. Um, uh, the weekly due dates, as I've mentioned, support the community. And the other thing I'll say is if it's taking you longer than this to do this, then ease up on yourself and, and you know, kind of get, kind of, kind of time block yourself and say, this is how much and this is what I can do in this amount of time. Um, we have actually had um, circles where and I, I, I can call this out because I myself am an English major. Um, English major circles often will be, you know, kind of uh, people will just write and write and write. There's something I think that comes naturally to a lot of, of you know, that, uh, that people in that discipline to be reflective and thoughtful. Um, but one reason that we want people to time block is that not everybody, you know, if you do a beautiful seven page reflection, that's awesome for you. But then your, 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 your peer circle member has to come and read that seven pages of reflection. And, and so there's an element of saying we want to time block this for everybody. So it's, it's something you can do with the rest of the things that you're doing in your busy life. But it's also something that other people can come in and, and, and you know, have something that's thoughtful and substantive, but isn't going to uh, carry anybody away or create a lot of anxiety around that. Um, so our facilitators also will coach people on that as well. If you find that you're really struggling, um, reach out to your facilitator and, and that's, they're there to provide support, to provide guidance. Um, and above all, you know, this is something that should be helping you grow and learn and, and be, um, uh, you know, helping you actually just give more structure to things that you probably are already doing in terms of thinking about, you know, what choices am I making and how is it working? Um, in the end, that's what it is. And this is just a little bit more structured way to, to uh, put thought into those types of activities that educators typically are doing all the time anyway. And so if you think about it like that, hopefully this is something that you can build in and just gives you a little bit more structure to the, the kinds of thoughtfulness that you're already putting into your teaching. All right, so as I've, uh, you know, so specifically what will I be doing uh, each week? And we've, we've touched on this, but just to kind of put it into a nutshell. So you're gonna be thinking about your teaching choices. You're gonna be analyzing, you know, how's it going and, and building on your strengths. You'll have opportunities to explore at different points. You'll be giving feedback to your peers. And again, as I just mentioned, it's, it's really just kind of adding a structure to things that a lot of educators are already doing. And so if you think about it that way, um, hopefully it, it's something that doesn't feel too heavy. It's something that will actually be, um, be kind of, you know, encouraging or helpful as you're looking. Um, and I have to say, especially going into what for most people are expecting is gonna be a challenging term. There's gonna be a lot of, a lot of uncertainty that we're all dealing with over this term. And so, so this can be an additional resource, a community around you that can help support you, help troubleshoot, help you, you know, think more creatively about things you can do um, going, into, uh, going into this term. Okay, who is in your circle? You have your facilitator, you have faculty from different institutions in the nine week Lumen Circle Fellowships. That'll be right around 12 faculty. It might be a couple smaller, it might be a couple larger, um, but right around 12. Uh, success Accelerator, the circles are a little bit larger. Um, everyone is exploring OER and open pedagogy or Courseware, um, you know, OER courseware. So there's that commonality that everybody has in the circle, regardless of what institution they're from. Um, and we are doing our best to align similar disciplines. We're, we're taking, okay, OER focus and start date and which disciplines and constructing circles that way. Um, and then uh, all of this happens, of course, in the virtual platform um, that I just showed you. Um, so who are the facilitators? So our facilitators are experienced educators. They have background with OER, with open pedagogy, with the courseware, you know, kind of depending on uh, where on the spectrum you are in your program. We do have Lumen Circles uh, programs that have other areas of focus like um, online teaching or active learning. 
Um, and so each time we're identifying a faculty member, or sorry, a, a facilitator who has a strong background in that area, um, so that they're able to both facilitate the community, but, um, but also provide, uh, I guess, a little bit of mentoring um, where, where appropriate through that experience. And then everybody has been through a training process and the methodology, the platform, um, you know, the, the whole approach. And so whenever you have questions, again, they're your, your go-to person. So uh, if you have questions, if you need help, uh, you know, once you're in your circle, your facilitator is a great person to go to. You can direct message them. You'll have their email, so you could contact them that way as well. You can also send requests to support at lumenlearning.com. So we're, this is part of the kind of broader Lumen Learning team. And so we have our support team that is uh, geared up and ready to, um, you know, to answer questions. Uh, I will also say if you've got questions, not only about like, how do I do this in the platform or, you know, what, what do I do with this assignment? Um, if you have broader questions that relate to OER or open pedagogy or using courseware or I used to do something like this in a face to face course and now I'm on online or I'm in a hybrid setting and how can I have somebody help me rethink how I how I do that. These are all the kinds of things that are in scope for this learning community. And so we would encourage you to take those questions to your facilitator, take those questions to the community. And as part of this program, you can also take them to Lumen with, you know, support at Lumen Learning or your facilitator might say, great question. Let's, let's go to the broader Lumen community and see what connections we can make or, or what resources we can provide to help you. Um, all of that is part of what we're trying to do in terms of that, that broader mentoring and support around this experience for you. Okay, a couple of tips for getting started. Um, in your email system, if you could white label the lumenlearning.com domain, and very specifically, you'll be getting notifications like your notification from the system saying you can, uh, you can, you know, please log in. Here's your login password. Um, that comes from the circles at lumenlearning.com email address. And so, uh, one of the things uh, we want to make sure everybody does is look out for that. And if you notice that that's going to your your junk email instead of your regular inbox or whatever, um, you know, go through the steps to make sure that that white is white labeled and it comes into a place where you're going to see it regularly. Um, on your first login, as I mentioned already, expect that pedagogy inventory survey that takes about five minutes or so to go through. And then immediately after that, it will ask you if you want to go through the orientation tour. And I would encourage you to go ahead. You, you can bypass it if you want to. Um, but I would encourage you the first time just to, to click OK and, and go through that tour. It's a, a few steps that just kind of show you here's the ways that you can set up the profile. If there's something that you want to skip and come back to later, you can go back through the orientation tour again and, and fill in profile pieces later after the fact as well. Um, but it gives you a nice, you know, kind of lay of the land. Um, there also is a circles tour that as you get added to your circle, you have the option and it just shows you different features of how to interact uh, with the members of your circle. And so you can uh, do that at some point. Um, and then I think that the, there's one other tour called a reflection tour and the first time that you do a teaching reflection, it will give you the option to do that tour, which again is just a step by step guided process of first you do this and then you do this. Um, and it allows you to do those activities as you're on the tour if you would like to. Um, so that's a, a um, those are those are helpful elements um, that just kind of prop a uh, show up as you get to that point in your experience. Um, and I think in most cases you can bypass them if you want to, if you think you've got it figured out, or you can go through the tour steps if you think that would be helpful. All right, that's all of my prepared material. Um, what questions do you have? And is there anything, anything else back in the platform or anything that I can cover for you? Right, to what extent does the course we're doing on the Lumen model, the manner in which Lumen's tools work for creating courses for students? Um, that is, a, um, that's a good question. The, uh, I'm trying to think about how to answer that. 
the the way that the lumen circles structure works is more about modeling that effective set of teaching practices um, and then lumens tools just um, they, they are there are ways that you could implement those kinds of practices um, and the it, in terms of the the way that lumen creates courses for students um, kind of separately from this, when we're creating a new course, there's a standard set of activities, like we start with a set of learning outcomes, and then we look for OER content that will help students address those outcomes. We identify gaps and figure out, you know, are we going to create new material to fill those gaps? Um, can we build on what already exists to fill those gaps? Um, and then we also add a learning design lens that says, okay, what is the, what's the best way to teach students this material? How can we make it interactive? How can we, um, how can, how can we do more to help, um, help it be an effective teaching and learning experience? Um, so, so that course design structure is a, it's a different thing from what we're trying to do with the, the OER and open pedagogy model, which is more exploratory and says, here's a set of effective teaching practices. What direction do you want to go? And then, and then uh, we, and then, you know, have a set of resources to explore. Here are ways that using OER can help you uh, move that direction and, and try out those kinds of things. Um, or here's how open pedagogy can help you um, explore those areas. So you're going to be asking some of the same types of questions that Lumen asks when we're creating an OER course or when we're trying to improve an OER course over time. Um, but this is not a create a course from start to finish. Um, it, it's more saying, what do you have now? And then think about how you're going to use those materials to create an effective learning experience and to apply effective teaching practices. Um, and then are you using Lumen's tools for doing this? You are not using Lumen, so, well, let me pause. The, the virtual learning circle platform that we've just showed you is, is actually now, it's a Lumen tool. And so you're using uh, Lumen's tool to interact with the platform. Um, but you will not be, we're not asking people to use Lumen's tools to build out or, you know, implement their course. We're assuming that you're coming into it with your set of learning materials that you've identified. Uh, it may or may not be Lumen, you know, some folks may be using our Candela courses or, or you know, other things. Um, OLI, but yeah. yeah, our OLI is another one, right? Or, you know, other OpenStax books, there's a lot of different resources. So we're assuming that you're coming in having identified, here's the set of resources that I want to use. And then you're going to go from there. So we're not going to like pull you back in and say, oh, no, you need to use the Lumen courseware or content for this. We're assuming that you're coming in with, with that. And then we're helping you to ask good questions and apply effective practices using whatever it is you've defined that you want to use for your students. So, so did, let me uh, augment that just a little bit, kind of from my perspective as well, Julie. Um, and thank you for that question, Paul. It's a good one. Um, you know, when we have been um, thinking about supporting the, the, the statewide work at the, you know, kind of centrally through the most initiative, one of the things that's been top of mind for me, of course, is, well, what value do we bring to this discussion, if, if, if any? And among the things that I hear over and over again is, gosh, it would just be so nice to be able to collaborate with other faculty that are doing this work. So um, this, you know, it, it, Julie mentioned earlier that um, this had been a Faculty Guild product, and many of you may know a little bit about Faculty Guild. We had actually engaged them um, prior to um, Lumen's acquisition um, because we we're, were interested in exactly this, having a platform in which that would facilitate this kind of interaction, um, and that was even pre-COVID, now made all the more um, um, relevant because it's going to be a whole lot less easy for us to get together and run a workshop at, uh, you know, over at UMBC centrally in the state and those kinds of things. So we're, we're um, piloting this, I would say, essentially, um, this first round to understand the extent to which this platform can support your work. Um, it is ind independent of uh, the Lumen tools in that respect. It, it, as Julie says, it is now, however, a, a tool that Lumen owns. Um, but 
I think, squarely focused on Lumen's mission to do what they can to support faculty development and use of OER in ways that, as I said at the uh, beginning, don't just increase um, affordability for students, but also increases student achievement. Um, so we're excited about it. We're eager to learn to have you all engage with it to the extent that you're able to and learn more from you all about how effective it has been and useful it has been for your for your work um, over particularly going into the fall semester. So um, Thank you for the questions. Thank you to Julie for your time today. We're at the top of the hour. So did you have anything else you wanted to say, Julie? And no, we're done. So I, the emails are in the chat. If you have other questions, feel free to, again, to reach out to MJ, as she said, and my email is there too. Um, and we so. will follow up with this PowerPoint deck. Yes. That was the very first question we got. So. Uh, yes, absolutely. I will right. uh, we'll get that out. Um, MJ, I'll coordinate with you separately about whether you'd like me to send that out or, or if you want to sure. get that out. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you all for joining us today. Good luck. Uh, stay well, please. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.